Welcome to Hello English Teacher. From now on, my CBSE English teacher will be known as Hello English Teacher. Expect the same support and encouragement from all of you. Today, let's learn the line by line explanation of the chapter Mitch Bill the Otter from Class 10 English. If you are watching my video for the first time, please subscribe. You can listen to the explanations of chapters from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. The author of this chapter is Gavin Maxwell. Gavin Maxwell was a Scottish naturalist and author best known for his non-fiction writing and his work with authors. He wrote the book Ring of Bright Water about how he brought an otter back from Iraq and raised it in Scotland. So let's move on to the lesson Mejbil the Otter. So in this story the narrator is going to talk about his pet called Mejbil. And what is Mejbil? Mejbil is an otter. What's an otter? It's an animal. It's a semi-aquatic animal usually found in the ocean and it looks like a wild cat. I've kept the picture on the front page. So when you look at that, you can understand what an otter looks like. Okay, so here he's talking about how he got an otter and what are his experiences with this animal. Okay, so first he had a dog. Okay, so after the death of this dog, he became very sad. He wanted to have another animal. So he then decides to keep an otter as his pet. So let's move on to the lesson. Early in the new year of 1956, I traveled to southern Iraq. So in the beginning of 1956, the narrator had traveled to Iraq. By then it had crossed my mind that I should like to keep an otter instead of a dog. And that camas fierna ringed by water a stone's throw from its door would be an eminently suitable spot for this experiment. So what happened? His dog died and he wanted to have a pet. So he then decided that he should have an otter. So why did he decide on an otter? Because the place he lived in England uh, called Camus Fiana. Okay? So that place had a lot of water around his area where he lived. And so he thought the best thing for this place would be an otter. So that is why he decided to keep an otter as a pet. So what is eminently suitable? That is best suitable. When I casually mention this to a friend, he casually replied that I better get one in the Tigris marshes. For these, for there they are, they were as common as mosquitoes. So he told about his wish to his friend. So what was his wish? To have an otter as a pet. So when he told his friend, his friend told him that you can get a lot of otters from the Tigris marshes. What is Tigris? It is a river in Iraq. So marshy area is where there is a lot of water, muddy area, watery area. There are lots of plants and all that. So if you go to that area, you can get a lot of otters because otters were like mosquitoes in Iraq and were often tamed by the Arabs and the Arabs like to tame or like to domesticate the otters. So we were going to Basra to the consulate general to collect and answer our mail from Europe. So what happened? He had some work. He had to go to Basra and he had to go to the consulate general there so that he could answer his mail. So in those days, remember it was in the 1950s. So they had to go there regarding their work. They had to get some mail and answer it. So they had to go to the headquarters in Basra. So he said that anyway he had to go there so he would be able to find these otters there. So where is Basra? Basra is a city in Iraq. So at the consulate general we found that my friend's mail had arrived but that mine had not. So when they went to the consulate general his friend's mail had arrived but he did not get his mail. The narrator did not get the mail. I cabled to England and when three days later nothing had happened I tried the telephone. So he had to give some message back home. So he tried to cable England. So it is something like the telegram. So he had to cable England but then I, even after three days he did not get his mail. So what did he do? He tried to contact his office by the using the telephone. 
the call had to be booked 24 hours in advance. So, in those days you cannot call especially long distance call to different countries, you cannot call as you do it today, you had to book your call at least 24 hours in advance. So, similarly he also booked his call in advance. On the first day the line was out of order, on the second the exchange was closed for a religious holiday. So, he was not able to call for two days because first day the line was not proper and the second day it was a holiday because of some religious festival or function. On the third day there was another breakdown. So, on the third day also he could not contact office. My friend left and uh, arranged to meet him in a week's time. So, his friend was there with him, he left because his job was done and he still, uh, the narrator still finished, didn't, did not finish his, so he left and they both promised to meet after a week. Five days later, my mail arrived. So, what happened? After five days, the narrator got his mail. I carried it to my bedroom to read and there squatting on the floor were two Arabs. So, what happened? He carried his mail, so he got his letter and then he took it to the place where he was staying because he wanted to read. But when he went to his room, what happened? He saw two Arabs were squatting on the floor, squatting means sitting on the ground. Besides them lay a sack that squirmed from time to time. So, along with the two Arabs, there was a sack. What is a sack? A gunny bag that squirmed means it was just moving here and there now. So, it was just moving as if something was alive inside. So, he saw this along with the Arabs. They handed me a note from my friend. So, here is your author. So, both the Arabs gave him a piece of letter and that letter was written by his friend. And what was there in the letter? The piece of note. Here is your author. So, the friend had delivered him an author through these Arabs. Okay. So, he said here is your author. So, with the opening of that sack began a phase of my life that had not ended and may for all I know not end before I do. So, what is he saying? From the moment I opened that sack which the Arabs bought, a different phase of my life started. That means, there was a total change in his life. It brought about a total change in his life. So, he said that the change remained for as long as he wanted. Even if he wanted to change, that would not be over. So, it is in effect a thraldom to authors an auto fixation that I have since found to be shared by most other people who have ever owned one. So, what is the meaning of thraldom? Thraldom is a situation where you be under the influence of something else that you like. So, it is a kind of a state like being a, a slave or a serf you know to be held in some kind of a bondage. So, here especially he is saying he was held by the Author. He loved it so much that he was so attracted to his author and this kind of bondage he found between most of the author owners. The creature that emerged from this sack onto the spacious tile floor of the consulate bedroom resembled most of all a very small medievally conceived dragon. So, this creature that emerged from the sack. So, what came out of the sack? It was this otter. So, it came on to the, it came out of the sack and it came on to the tiled floor of the bedroom. And it was very small and it looked like a medievally conceived dragon. So, it was looking like a small dragon that belonged to the olden days or the old ages. From the head to the tip of the tail, he was coated with symmetrical pointed scales of mud armor. So, his body was totally covered with mud, okay, between whose tips was visible a soft velvet fur like that of a chocolate brown mold. So, his scales was completely covered with mud and it looked like an armor. And then between the scales, you could also see a soft velvet skin that was chocolate brown in color. He shook himself and I half expected a cloud of dust, but in fact it was not for another month that I managed to remove the last of the mud and see the otter as it were in his true colors. So, what happened? As soon as the animal came out of the sack, it shook its body vigorously and then the narrator expected that the tiled floor would be covered with mud, but nothing of that sort happened. He is saying that it took at least one month for him to remove the mud from the otter's body so that he could see the real color of the animal. 
Mijbil, as I call the author, was in fact of a race previously unknown to science. So he is saying that he called this author as Mijbil, and this kind of animal was not known to science previously at all, and was at length christened by zoologist Lutregale Perspicillata Maxwelli or Maxwell's otter. And so he is saying that the zoologist renamed this animal as Maxwell's otter or just Lutregale Perspicillata Maxwelli. For the first 24 hours, Medjul was neither hostile nor friendly. So when he took it home in his room, he understood that for the first 24 hours, that is for the first day, Mijbil behaved in a very different manner. He was neither friendly nor hostile. So he did not behave like a friend nor like an enemy. Hostile means behaving in an, uh, behaving with some enmity. So he was neither friendly nor hostile. He was simply aloof and indifferent. So the animal stayed away. It was standing very separately it did not come and mingle with the narrator at all choosing to sleep on the floor as far from my bed as possible so the animal slept at a distance it did not come close to the narrator at all on the first day the second night Mijbil came on to my bed in the small hours and remained asleep in the crook of my knees until the servant brought tea in the morning so on the first night the animal was aloof but what happened on the second night it came to his bed during the small hours what is small hours the initial hours after midnight so it came to the narrator and slept in between his knees so till the servant bought tea in the morning and during the day he began to lose his apathy what is apathy enthusiasm so the animal did not have any enthusiasm in the morning and take a keen much too keen interest in his surroundings so he did not have any interest and did not take any interest in the surrounding at all i made a body belt for him and took him on a lead to the bathroom where half an hour he went wild with joy in the water so what happened he made a belt for this animal and he took him to the bathroom and in the bathroom the animal was so happy because he saw water plunging and rolling in it, shooting up and down the length of the bathtub under water and making enough slosh and splash for a hippo. So the animal was so excited to see water, it started playing and splashing all around the water from the bathtub. This I was to learn is a characteristic of otters. So what is the characteristic of otters? Playing with water, being happy when they see water. Every drop of water must be, so as to speak, extended and spread about the place so he's saying every drop of water should not be wasted so the animal does play with every single drop of water a bowl must at, at once be overturned so if there is a bowl the animal would overturn it or if it will not be overturned be sat in and sploshed in until it overflows so if there is a bowl what the animal would do it will overturn it suppose it did not overturn it what it will do if it is full of water it will go and sit in the water and splash the water all around so that the water would overflow from that so these are some of the characteristics of otters water must be kept on the move and made to do things when static it is wasted and provoking so whenever the water is seen in front of an otter it must make it move or it must splash it all around so that is one of the most important characters of otters so whenever an otter sees a water sees water that is static he feels that it is wasted and it almost provokes him to play with water two days later Mijbil escaped from my bedroom as i entered it and i turned to see his tail disappearing round the bend of the corridor that led to the bathroom so one day what happened the otter escaped from his bedroom and ran away into his bathroom by the time I got there, he was up on the end of the bathtub and fumbling at the chromium taps with his paw. So what happened? As soon as he went inside the bathroom, he saw that the otter was playing with the tap and he was trying to meddle with the chromium taps. That fumbling means he was trying to meddle and trying to open the taps with his paws. I watched amazed in less than a minute, he had turned the tap far enough to produce a trickle of water and after a moment or two achieved the full flow. So he saw how the otter was trying to open the tap and within minutes he was able to 
opened the tap fully and lot of water was flowing from it. He had been lucky to turn the tap the right way or on later occasions he would sometimes screw it up still tighter, chittering with irritation and disappointment that the tap's failure to cooperate. So the narrator says that this time the otter was lucky because he had turned the tap in the right direction so that it opened. Sometimes what happened he turned it the other way and at that time the, type would, the tap would become tighter and the animal would make some noises due to irritation. Very soon Mijbil would follow me without a lead and come to me when I called his name. So now after a few days they both became quite friendly. So whenever the narrator called him by its name, he would come closer to the narrator. He spent most of his time in play. He spent hours shuffling a rubber ball around the room like a four-footed four soccer player using all four feet to dribble the ball and he could also throw it. So he used most of his time to play and especially he was playing around with a rubber ball as if a four feet football player was dribbling a ball and he would also throw it with a powerful flick of his neck to a surprising height and distance. So with his neck he was able to throw the ball to a certain distance and height as well. But the real play of an otter is when he lies on his back and juggles with small objects between his paws. So he says that playing with the ball is not his real game. What he really plays in a very interesting way is juggling small objects by lying on its back. The animal lies on its back and with its paws it juggles small objects. Marbles were Mitch's favorite toys and his pastime. So Mitch Bill liked to play with marbles also. He would lie on his back rolling two or more of them up and down his wide flat belly without ever dropping one to the floor. So what would Mitch do? He would lie on his back and he would like to roll two or more marbles on his belly and the marbles would never fall to the floor. So he used to like to roll these marbles in this manner. The days passed peacefully at Basra but I dreaded the prospect of transporting Mitch to England and to Kamasvirna. So what happened? He says the days at Basra was quite peaceful. He was happy with Mitch Bill. But then he started fearing how he is going to transport Mitch to England and then to Camus Fiona where he had lived. The British airline to London would not fly animals. Why he feared? Because he had to take the British airline to London. But then this British airlines does not allow to carry animals. So I booked a flight to Paris on another airline and from there to London. So what he had to do? He had to book a flight to Paris and from there he would go to London but because those flights might allow him to carry his pet. The airline insisted that mid should be packed into a box not more than 18 inches square to be carried on the floor at my feet. So that airlines that is how he is going to fly to Paris. So that airlines told him he can carry his pet but then the pet should be put into a box which is 18 inches square and that floor and that box should be kept near his feet. I had a box made and an hour before we started I put Midge into the box so that he would become accustomed to it and left for a hurried meal. So he made a box of the measurement and he put Midge into the box so that it would get used to the box and then he went to have his food. When I returned there was an appalling spectacle. So after having his food when he returned he saw something shocking, appalling means shocking. There was complete silence from the box. Actually he had put Midge in the box so naturally there should be some noise but then it was completely silent. But from the air holes and chinks around the lid blood had trickled and dried. So what was shocking when he saw was that the box had some holes because Midge had to be uh, breathe and then when he saw the box he saw that from the holes and other openings of the box blood had oozed out and then it had dried also. So this was quite shocking to him. So I hope you like today's video. Let's look at the next part of this lesson in my next video. For more informative videos, do subscribe to Hello English Teacher. Like, share and give your valuable comments below. Thank you for watching.